Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about heat load calculations for condominiums. In other words, we're going to do the heat load calculation, equipment selection, duct sizing for a condominium use. All right, so let's get into it. Step number one, and we're going to go to the point, is the following. So step one, yeah, let's put in here step one like this. So this is the HVAC easy mat, right? So we have to make everything easy. There we go. So step number one, I would say spend time, see, spend time on your floor plan, on your floor plan right floor plan that's step number one then after you analyze very well your floor plan and what are you gonna get your floor plan actually you're, you're gonna get the floor plan actually from the architect you can get this from the architect okay you can get this from the owner from the homeowner or you can get this from a site survey because sometimes there is no there's no drawing site survey so site survey is like, if there's no drawings or the drawings are not very legible, you have to go to the site and you need to draw what is there, what's not there, existing conditions. So you have these three options. When it's a new construction, usually the architect is gonna give you very nice drawings. But what if there's a house that has been already built and that house they're asking you to do a heat load calculation, then you need to ask for the drawings to the owner. But sometimes the drawings are not that, um, that legible sometimes they are not easy to read so then you have to go and see what is the existing condition so that way you go to a site survey all right so now spend time on your floor plan after that after you spend some time on your drawing and honestly this is coming actually from experience it's a very good idea to spend time on your drawing there's no time to rush because if you rush there's gonna be there's gonna be some mistakes okay so now for step number two, after you read, analyze and did everything with your drawing, you're going to go find the location, right? What is the location of this house? Why is the location so important? Because based on the location, you're going to be able to find a step number three. Step number three is find your envelope values. Okay, we're going to put in here envelope, envelope values. Well, thermal envelope, right? So what are you going to be your envelope values? I need this information. That's going to be what I mean. Wall, ceiling, okay, floor, okay, floor. What else? Uh, see, yeah, wall, ceiling, floor, windows, okay, and doors. All right. So what do we need about this wall, ceiling, floor, windows, doors? Actually, we need the U values. So what we're going to put in here is we need the U value. See, U factor, U value. There's another video I did for that U factor. Or the insulation values, right? U factor for this, the same. U, U factor, solar heat going coefficient. But why after the location? Because based on the location, you need to know the International Energy Conservation Code. For example, where, where can you get the envelope values? And I'm going to put this in pink since, since, since it's very important. So the envelope values is going to be provided by the, again, by the architect, by the homeowner. Sometimes they have the, that information available or from IECC, IECC. So usually, see, architect, owner, but if they don't give you these values, you can assume the minimum, right? The minimum insulation required by International Energy Conservation Code. How are you going to know that? Based on the location, okay? So based on the location, in this case, this house, the condo is going to be located in Fairfax, Virginia. See, Fairfax, Fairfax, Virginia. So that's the county. And with this location, I'm going to be able, so if you don't have the U factor, ceiling U value, I mean insulation values, then you need to assume, because you need to make the heat load calculation, you need to have data. So if you don't have the data, go 
to go to the International Energy Conservation Code based on location. All right. So let's start. Well, let's start with step number one. Step number one is spend some time on your plan, and this is very important. Analyze your plan. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna put this in pink and then see what the plan is about. Okay. As we said, unfortunately, I know everyone wants to get be done with a video sometimes in, in YouTube, but no, in this case, let's spend some time analyzing this drawing, all right? Uh, I'm telling you from experience. So on the right side, we have a condominium. Now we're spending time on the floor plan, right? Okay. So in this case, we need to know where is the main entrance. So the main entrance is going to be at this door, as you can see. There is the main entrance, okay? That's the main entrance. And this is the corridor, okay? This is the corridor, corridor. And usually your front, this door is your reference, okay? This door is your reference. With that being said, this is gonna give you the orientation, right? So if this is north, then this is gonna be east, west, so that's very important we found the main entrance so what do we have after the main entrance after the main entrance you're gonna have a foyer see you have a foyer in here after that you have two options you can go to the right or you can go i mean you can go to the left or you can go to the right on the left you have a dining area and then you have a living room so this is an open space okay so now you have another uh, partition wall and in the middle you have a kitchen see the kitchen is in the middle and you're gonna be you, you're gonna have in here a family room a family room, multi-use room, whichever you want. You can put a, uh, what? I'm gonna give you values for internal loads for this, all right? We have the family room. Now we're gonna go to the internal side and the internal side you're gonna have a den. This den is gonna be a multi-use room. You can use it for anything. They Usually they call it secondary living room. So you can apply it for a studio, I mean, a study, or an office or a bedroom. So it's kind of flexible, the den, whatever you wanna call it. So we're gonna give this uh, heat load internal loads. Then master bedroom, the, we have the master bedroom or the owner's bedroom. From the owner's bedroom in here, you have a walk-in closet. We're gonna need a diffuser for that because it's big. As you can see in here, this uh, closet, a big closet. This is small closet, closet right here, closet right here. Don't require any conditioning because it's very, very small. It doesn't, it, it doesn't need any register. So do you see the difference? This are called walk-in closets and this closet is big so we're gonna put a diffuser that for sure i mean a register right now in here you have a hole see i'm gonna put this in green actually no i'm gonna put like this so this is open area like in, in the middle is like a hole why don't we do this actually so what we're gonna do in here is let's put a hole overall we can we can name this as a hole let's put in here hole hallway hall maybe one and here we can call hall two no hall one all of this see you're gonna have a, a, a second bedroom and you're gonna have another closet in here and then in the middle you have the utility area or the mechanical room where you have the d dryer the w washer and the hwh water heater f the furnace okay so now you study the drawings now let's continue, let's not rush, let's continue analyzing this drawing. You need to find out what is conditioned and what is exposed, okay? So since I know this drawing a little bit, uh, since I checked on this drawing, we're gonna put in here what is exposed. So this is exposed wall, all of this. This is exposed, this is exposed, see, it's in, it's in blue. And we're gonna put everything in right soft for to do my heat load calculation this is exposed all of this and this is not exposed all this wall is not exposed all this wall is not exposed okay alrighty so how do i know this and also in here there is uh, some some letters in here but uh, is not very readable so since it's not readable that's why it's you might have to go to do a site survey to find out and to verify what it is but in here it says the patio on the ground floor only. That means this location, the location for this unit is on the second floor. All right, second floor, second floor. Second floor of 
C of a three-story building. In other words, we're, we're gonna have something like this. One, see like this. One, two, three. See, I'm spending some time in this drawing. I remember one of my colleagues told me one day, he usually spends half hour just looking at the drawing. If someone has to get used to the drawing, analyze the drawing very well. So if that's the case, it's good. So it's a three-story, three-story, see, three-story, multi-family or condominium, see? And this unit is located here in the middle, like, like a sandwich. And this, this building is something like this, very, very long. See, there are other units in, in between, so like this. See, there's more units in here, units, units, it's multi-family, something like this, right? Something like this, a lot of houses, see? And this is my condominium, condo, condo, all right? It's not a townhome, it's a condominium, okay? Now, honestly, I, before I didn't know the difference, I didn't know the difference between a condominium and an apartment unit. So an apartment unit is when you're renting it, you don't own it. But in this case, a person that owns, owns this unit, then it's a condominium. Okay, all right, so now everything is ready. The second part in here, we're spending some time on the floor plan. We're gonna get still used to the floor plan, and after that, we're gonna do a heat load calculation in uh, RightSoft. But also, we need, we need to check on this, location, envelope values too, okay? Because this is gonna be a complete series of videos. Okay, so the next, the next part is, we're gonna continue analyzing this building. Here we go. So there's more drawings in here. Okay, where are we located? So this is actually the floor plan. Okay. Where is this floor plan located? Right here. See, as you can see in here, the floor plan is located right here. So in this case, as I said, and that's why I'm making this video, because it's very important to get to know your drawing, the reference is the front door. See, there's the arrow. The front door in this case is in here. That's the front door. There you go. If this is the front door, you have the family room, then bedroom one, bedroom two, and everything else, right? And this is the corridor. Right here is the corridor. See? And uh, we found out that next to it, there are stairs. And that's very interesting. Because if there are stairs, they are usually not conditioned. They are only heated, but not conditioned for, uh, in cooling. So we might put this under unconditioned actually. for. So that's gonna be interesting actually. So we acknowledge that there's a st stairwell here. All right, let's continue analyzing this drawing and then we're gonna go here, see? In here, you're again, see, you, you might find, you, you might get lost. So in this case, in order to get back on track on the drawing, what is your reference? The reference is the front door. Where is my front door? Right here, see? My front door is right here, in this case, right here, all right? Right here, right? Front door. And then on the other unit, we have this. So technically, this is like a T. This is the corridor, corridor, and then the unit we're analyzing, as we said, is exposed on all these sides. Oh, again, see, we're, sp we're spending some time in the drawings and I found out something else. From here to here is exposed. Since this, since this is exposed, I'm gonna put it in my heat load calculation, right? So in the heat load calculation right here, in my analysis, I'm gonna put that as exposed. There we go, right here. So it's actually exposed all of this. That's also exposed, right? That's very important. That's why I'm analyzing the drawing. Okay, where is this located? Right here, see? All exposed. So we have one, two, three exposures. All right. Okay, let's continue going. So see, this unit is located here at the corner, right here. Right here, right here, all of this region right here see that's the unit and then they have other units the same units in here other units right here see this building is like a t like a t it keeps on going up 
And this arrow, arrow means that it continues to the next page like this. See, it's a big uh, multi-family building. What else do we have? That should be it. All right. All right. Uh, we're not going to make this video longer. So the first step is done. We are more knowledgeable about how the unit is. So that way we can input all this data into Writesoft. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to be analyzing step number two. Okay. And then I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button. That helps a lot. And subscribe. All right. I'll see you in the next video.